Okay, next we're going to show, show you some splinting techniques. Uh, for, for this scenario, uh, Katie has uh, possibly fractured or sprained her wrist, but it's found in this position, so since we're not sure, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the splinting is the right thing to do. Uh, one of the splints I'm going to use today is going to be a SAM splint, uh, it's an aluminum splint. And for this one, I would kind of measure the length of the injured spot, okay? And before I put it on Katie, I would just kind of mold the, the center of it with my arm, since there's no fracture. And I would test the center. One thing I want to tell Katie is, you know, try, to, try not to move it much. And you always want to try to splint it in the position found. Okay, so if her hand is in that position, you know, and if I need to make some adjustments, I want to do, would need to do that Go ahead. Um, on my own before I apply it for, for a, a final time. Okay. So once I have this, if that's fine, I don't need to make any more adjustments. Next, I'm going to um, ask Katie uh, with a good hand to hold on to that. And I'm going to grab some. You can either use elastic wraps or you can use some um, triangular bandages for this. And what I would do is I would just, I would splint. Go ahead and hold that, Katie. And I'm just going to apply this. Uh, oops, that's a long one. There we go. Just above and below the injured site. Okay, again, just talking to the patient to make sure it's not too tight or too loose. Apply another one. Again, I'm going above the injured site, which is at the wrist. Once she's in this position, you still want to help give her some more support. So I'm going to for this, now I'm going to use a, um, a sling and swab method with uh, triangular bandages. Okay, so while she's holding her arm there, I'm going to make my triangle so that the middle edge of the triangle is facing the elbow. Okay, top facing towards her head and that's going to go up on the inside. Um, sorry, up over the good good shoulder. Okay, and then this one is going to come up supporting the cast as much as possible. And again I would just, before I tie it down, I would hold this here to see if it supports, if it needs to come up higher or lower. Okay, so I'm, go ahead and hold it, Katie. Got it? Mm -hmm. I'm bring it up a little bit. And again, we would, with the, our gauze, we would put a gauze pad underneath the knot in the back of the neck. And then once we have that, we're going to pin off or tie a little knot here in the corner. And then the last thing that we're going to do is, that's the sling, now we're going to put the swab on there to help keep it close to the body, because right now she can move it away from the body, which is not good. So again, with the triangular bandage, fold it or roll it. Again, you want to be careful not to get the, the injured body part. And this, we would tie on the, the good side. Again, we'd put a piece of gauze underneath the, 
knot. Make sure it's good height, but not too far up or down on the elbow. And the last thing that we always want to do is we want to check for distal pulse, capillary refill, sensations of the fingers, ask if it's too tight or too loose and comfortable. So she should now, this should hold the weight of the arm from going down and it should also keep her from going out. It should also be keeping the wrist uh, up in position that it was found uh, so we can transport her to the emergency room. Okay.